Hello everyone and welcome to another video review. I have here the Solido 118 diecast Renault RS20 from the 2020 British Grand Prix as driven by Frenchman Esteban Ocon. Ocon made his Formula 1 debut at the 2016 Belgian Grand Prix for the backmarker and now defunct Mano Racing Team. The Frenchman had already made a fine impression before by winning the Euro Formula 3 title in 2014, beating the likes of Max Verstappen to the crown. For 2017, Ocon stepped up to the Force India team and immediately made a good impression. He scored a few solid point finishes and was seen as one of Formula 1's rising stars. The following year was a bit more difficult as the car was not as competitive as the year before. Midway through the season, the team then also ran into financial troubles. A consortium led by Canadian billionaire Lawrence Stroll took over at the helm and renamed it Racing Point. This meant that Ocon's seat at the team was at risk, as Stroll would of course bring his son Lance into the team for the following season. The team then also chose to keep Mexican veteran Sergio Perez to partner Stroll as Ocon's star was starting to wane a little bit. A few intra-team collisions with Perez and an accident was being lapped at the 2018 Brazilian Grand Prix with race leader Max Verstappen and the ensuing uh, shoving match later in Parc Ferme sealed his fate. During the 2019 season, Ocon reverted to his role as Mercedes Junior. Luckily for him, Renault was interested in his services and signed him up to partner Daniel Ricciardo at the Régie for 2020. Initially, Ocon was a bit rusty but managed to score some points here and there. His teammate Ricciardo, meanwhile, scored a podium at the Eiffel Grand Prix and drank another shoey at Imola, finishing third again. Ocon's moment de gloire would uh, come later in the season at the Sakir Grand Prix, finishing an excellent second in a topsy-turvy race behind his former teammate Sergio Perez. This was Esteban's first podium finish in Formula 1. He was kept on by the team for the 2021 season, now renamed Alpine, alongside two times Formula 1 world champion Spaniard Fernando Alonso. The model is, as mentioned, made by Solido. The brand is more well known for making decent budget road going cars and uh, racing or rallying machines. In fact, they only made a handful of Formula 1 models in the past, a 1985-86 McLaren MP4 II with opening parts as part of their uh, Alain Prost collection, and then the Formula 1 Renaults from 2018 on. The 2018 car was a presentation car without a driver figurine, and the 2019 car was a Daniel Ricciardo version from that year's Australian Grand Prix. They only produced one driver per season. Now, I'm not a fan of the Renault team or Esteban in particular, but I was very intrigued by Solido's efforts. And already in the pre-production stage, it was apparent this would be a very interesting model car. The only reason I bought it was to see how it would uh, look like in the flesh and how it would stack up against the much more expensive rival brands. And at 49 euro, I mean, I'm not taking a huge risk. The packaging is nothing too special, just a windowed box. Uh, typical of Solido's um, new style competition line. Of course, the box is quite big, bigger than the usual boxes as the current Formula 1 cars have become huge nowadays. On the back of the box then, there's a, a little bit of uh, Solido's history. And then uh, the usual licensing information on the bottom. The model then is presented on this uh, small plastic podium with these uh, see-through plastic holders to keep it all in uh, place. And it's not as if you're going to really display it like this, I would think. So uh, packaging wise, nothing too special going on here. From an overall standpoint, I'd say it's a pretty nice model car. It does uh, look like an accurate representation of the real car and it's visibly quite detailed too. However, some things are not entirely correct or a bit weird holding the model like I am now. The wheels do droop down a little bit. This is uh, not the case anymore when the model is set on a solid surface, as you can see here, but it's only when the wheels aren't supported that they bend down somewhat. The model then also suffers a bit from toe in, as you can see from above, so the wheels point at each other slightly. You can adjust it a bit by pushing them apart. Uh, also, in my opinion, the front wing is just slightly too wide. Uh, so normally it's the same uh, width as the wheels of the car and uh, here it's a few millimeters wider but uh, I guess it's not too noticeable for most people. I do like the overall look though and uh, I really like what they made of it. Now 
Let's then have a look at the cockpit and the helmet first. And uh, it looks good in my opinion. It's not too far away from the real thing. As you can see here, a picture of Esteban's real helmet from 2020. However, the shape of the helmet is not entirely correct. It's actually based on a Schubert helmet shape-wise. Uh, that's most likely due to the fact that they modeled the helmet after Nico Hülkenberg's when they did the 2018 model and then never updated it again. Uh, you'll all be also be able to see a Zylon panel in the shape, which is uh, actually not on the helmets anymore since 2019. One thing I do like is the look of the visor. They tried to replicate the Iridium red uh, tinted visor and I think they did a really good job. It looks better than the brown plain visor uh, decal Minichamps is using for instance. So yeah, pretty nice. To the figurine then, the driver suit is replicated with these uh, decals and uh, it's quite okay but for some reason there are no seat belts, not even simple decals which is a bit uh, strange looking. The steering wheel then is nicely done. It uh, looks like the real thing and has some visible dials, switches and buttons. The shape looks to be correct and it's, uh, well, as I said, nicely detailed. I also really like the driver's hands, especially the gloves. The gear shift pedals do look a bit too far away though. The halo then is not really uh, very detailed. It doesn't even have uh, carbon fiber texturing on it but uh, at least it uh, features all the correct logos on it. We'll move to the wings then and start at the front. As I mentioned, I feel like it's slightly too wide the front wing, not by much though, but yeah, still a little bit. The wings are made out of plastic and uh, has this carbon uh, detailing in it. The cascades then, they're all cut out and uh, the cutouts are maybe a bit rough and a bit big. As you can see, the gaps are quite pronounced. Also, there is this uh, spillage of plastic from the uh, carbon fiber effect in between those gaps. The wing then is nicely shaped. You have these uh, vertical strakes and then the vortex uh, generating tunnels on the end plates, which are nice too. I did put some extra detailing on the slot gap separators by painting them in this silver color and using some aluminium tape as it was lacking some detail as you can see here. Here's a picture of the real wing. The end plates themselves are nicely done too with this uh, sloping shape. Moving to the rear wing then and uh, it was a bit slanted on my model originally. Thankfully uh, you can easily push it back into uh, position it's only held on by these little pieces of uh, rear wing end plates on the diffuser. Those uh, end plates themselves then, they uh, look quite good. There's again clear carbon fiber texturing in it. Also on the inside of the end plates in the yellow part. The aggressively cut gills then, in them are very nicely replicated. As is this very fine gill here in front of the Yahoo sponsorship. The rear wing planes are fused together, as you can see, so it's just one piece instead of two separate pieces. The DRS mechanism on the main plane was originally not connected to the upper flap, weirdly enough. So um, I had to add these uh, connecting pieces. The rear wing pillars then are also attached to the main plane. Then there's also a uh, T-wing attached to the pillars and a monkey seat that's hanging over the exhaust. If you then follow these uh, pillars further down, you'll notice there's a, a bit of a gap there. They are in fact not attached to the uh, crash structure gearbox casing. And from the back, you can see it should be attached to the structure, but it's, uh, it's not, it's floating around basically. And I actually tried to bend them down and straighten them out, but they're not long enough to attach to the gearbox casing. It also makes the rear wing a bit uh, wobbly, but that has its uh, advantage as I could bend the wing into correct position then. To the wheels then, and uh, they have this nice texturing on the tires. As you can see, there are these lines on the sidewalls. The 
thread originally had some uh, lines on them as well so they actually go through on the thread but they were a bit exaggerated so I sanded it down a bit to make it less uh, pronounced but the idea is nice in fact only uh, BBR does this uh, as well even the likes of Minichamp's uh, Spark or Luxmart don't even feature this detail the rims then look good too with that uh, extra ring in it I then also did my usual extra detailing uh, to the sidewalls of the tires with the handwritten markings, the details like the uh, L's and the R's and then Esteban Ocon's initials some more markings and uh, of course the barcode decal the wheels on the rear are really nice as well I did have to move the Pirelli branding from the inside of the tire wall common mistake, I also did have to color the wheel nuts as it was just plain black, now it's red on one side and green on the other and I did the same for the fronts too the wheel nut on the front is also the wrong shape it should be uh, well, like a cone, cone shaped um, just like they are uh, on the rears this may be because uh, the 2018 Renault had these uh, hollowed out ones at the front and Solido didn't uh, update it anymore maybe the wheels then also rotate freely and the front wheels also turn from side to side but the steering is a bit weird on the model if you look at the uh, suspension the steering arm is uh, well actually here in the front of the uh, Genie capital sponsor sponsoring on the wishbone and it's in a fixed position and the push rods actually uh, act as steering arms on this model and it's not something Renault are doing uh, differently it's uh, something Solido does for some reason also when you turn the wheels the steering wheel actually pops up so you can push it back into place but uh, it pops up again the minute you touch the wheels The model also features some uh, smaller, finer details too, although um, ironically they are a bit uh, rough sometimes, just like uh, well, the front wing cascades are. The nose of the car is uh, nicely shaped with that uh, cape underneath it, which has a nice carbon fiber texture. These camera pods aren't too bad either, they may be a bit too shiny. The suspension looks uh, okay with again carbon texture in it and the brake ducts are actually quite good on the top of the nose then they added these uh, small ears and the antenna then is lacking a bit of detail and then the 360 camera here underneath the Renault sponsorship is um, well not really detailed it's simply painted over the barnsboard area then is not too bad it's of course quite a complex structure with all these cuts and gills and everything but I think they managed to make it look detailed enough I did have to color this little guiding vein uh, in silver and also added some more detailing here then the side pot intake is also nicely detailed albeit not very refined the mirrors then are quite good as well but they uh, droop down a bit they should be more horizontal, more straight, like uh, like this actually. You can try to push them into place, but I didn't want to snap them off. The airbox intake then is, um, well, actually not deep enough, which is a bit of a shame. Especially that big gaping hole behind the driver's head should be a real hole. They did uh, replicate the big bulbous uh, airbox, which of course now is even more exaggerated on this year's Alpine. And uh, here you can see how big it actually is on the model already. I do really like these rivets on the engine cover. It's only on the engine cover though and uh, nowhere else on the model. The floor detailing then uh, is well okay I'd say. There's again some carbon fiber texture in the plastic. Maybe it's a bit too shiny the black color uh, but it doesn't look too bad. There are no uh, cutout slots unfortunately. The rear suspension is also nicely shaped and uh, these bulges in the side pod are really nice too. I do really like this uh, blue part on the shock fin with the E-Tech hybrid uh, sponsorship on it. The rest of the rear is quite good as well with these uh, vertical strakes underneath the diffuser. They then even did these uh, extra strengthening rods here 
connecting the diffuser to the crash structure and uh, it looks quite nice actually. The exhaust end isn't too bad either. The three pipes, they are all fused together though. But I mean, even on a BBR model, they uh, aren't all separate, so I guess it's alright. The biggest positive point on this model is of course the price. Uh, at only 49 euro you get a lot of bang for your buck. Some of the details are really nice too, like the textures on the sidewalls of the tires, the cutout front wing cascades, uh, the tinted uh, visor on the helmet, and then uh, the detailing um, on the rear wing end plates. On the negative part you can say the front wheel nuts aren't too good. There's no uh, seat belt detailing in the cockpit and the helmet has uh, the wrong shape although not a lot of people would actually notice that. Then there's also the slightly too wide front wing which yeah again is not really noticeable and of course the rear wing pillars that are just uh, floating. To conclude then I'd say it's a very good model car by Solido especially considering its price Compared to other manufacturers, it's slightly below a Minichamps or Spark model, but only about a third of its price, and it's not that it's three times less detailed. I would definitely rank it above a Brago model, which is more expensive, by the way. So yeah, I really like this one, even though I'm not an uh, Ocon or Renault fan particularly. With a few minor upgrades, it uh, effortlessly slips in between those more expensive model cars, and I would totally recommend it to any Renault or Ocon fan, or to um, a casual Formula 1 fan who is searching for a nice and very affordable piece. So this was my quite lengthy review of the Solido Scale 118 Renault RS20. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more of this kind of content.